January 7th is exactly seven years since Nanada Danko Ekufuado took the oath to be president of the Republic of Ghana. He promised to give citizens the better Ghana his predecessor failed to deliver. Seven years on, do you see a better Ghana? This day is just as important to the country as it is for the party on whose wings the president came to office. Events of the last few weeks, however, would seem as though those wings now feeble can no longer carry another candidate into office. At least 18 members of parliament, some of whom are experienced members of the party, have chosen to bow out of the 2024 parliamentary race. Why? What does it mean for the future of the NPP? Is this a testament to poor performance, internal wranglings maybe, or a sign of defeat even before the elections began? I am Kemeni Amano, and in this edition, I sit with the man who has seen hell at the hands of his party, yet his loyalty has never wavered. He's a civil engineer, but has dedicated much of his life to the well-being of the NPP. From General Secretary and his suspension, he returned with a failed bid for the flag bearer of the party. My guest on Hot Issues is politician and civil engineer, Kwabna Ej Ejapong. Thanks for sitting with us here on Hot Issues. I appreciate that, Kevin. Seven years of the NPP, seven years of an Akufuado administration. Have you delivered? Most importantly, I, I think that if you look at the record of this government, there are quite a number of things that you can speak to. Like what? Like infrastructure development. I am a civil engineer and I speak with a lot of experience regarding that. I don't think I've seen a government that has touched so many roads around the country all at the same time. In fact, I believe they've spread themselves too thin. So mm -hmm. sometimes um, the impact is not felt in many areas. But it is an attempt at equitable distribution of the national cake to make sure that all parts of the country are touched. Just some, these are some of the very high points of the government. You look at uh, the education facilities, for instance, the TVET schools, it's, it's not only in Accra, it's been spread around. I think about six to ten are nearing completion, and that's quite impressive. And um, the bold attempt to have Agenda 111, I, I, I wasn't in favor of attempting to build 111 hospitals at the same time, especially when we are going through economic turmoil. So on the provision of infrastructure... But, but those hosp hospitals are not there right now? A lot of them are nearing completion. I think about 30 or so are nearing complete, completion around the country. Is really? there? And, and, yes, I've been to quite a number of places. And I think for Mina, and I don't have the figures directly, but I can tell you, um, there are a lot of them nearing completion you know, around the country. So I do think on that balance sheet, it looks good with the provision of infrastructure. But there are areas that we have struggled. And we have Let's to be, talk about we have those be, areas because you're not necessarily. Would I think what is important for us as a country, I'm not going to reside in the past. <laughs> yeah, I'm an MPP person. I'm not going to reside in the past. What we believe and what I believe we need as a country is a new Ghanaian. Mm -hmm. Especially I spoke about a new dawn when I was running for president, right. as presidential aspirant. Mm -hmm. And it's important that our development has to be anchored on public service our very understanding of what public service should mean to all of us Ghanaians, including you in the media, is very important. The lack of trust and belief in the governance architecture and the political parties, if you look at some of the surveys that have been conducted, there's a drain in confidence in that. And that is what worries me for the future generations. The thinking that politics or other is somehow supposed to be the quickest way mm -hmm. to fame or money, I believe that politics is about public service. The same NPP administration, noting that these numbers that you have given yeah. have always existed, mm -hmm. told the Ghanaian people who were coming in to do better than the previous administration, yes. the Mahama administration, yes. that is. But the truth is, those numbers have not improved. And, 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 and That I is mean, a fact. I why, mean, nobody, why, must, why must we? That is a fact. Why must the Ghanaian people we give, also not forget, give you another chance? We should also not forget that this, is, this does not happen in a vacuum. That we've had serious challenges, global challenges around the whole world. And those of us who have opportunity to travel around, 
I'm wearing a piece of trousers, and in America they call it pants. I used to buy it for $25. The last time I was in the United States, it was 95, so I couldn't buy it. Inflation that was single digits. Which, which, it must, so it must I'm have telling been the you, store you went to. <laughs> no, it's not exactly. It's just uh, Morton's, which is a normal men's shop in America. It's not one of those uh, elite. I'm not one given to Mo brands and that kind Morton's of stuff. Morton's is also not Walmart. So, I mean. Well, I'm just trying to tell you that this has been a very difficult economic environment around the whole world. And we have to take cognizance of that. I mean, ministers of finance around the world have been tumbling like a pack of cards. Governments have fallen. Mm -hmm. So yes, we, we, we as Ghana, we are part of the global village. And so therefore, it means that the crunch that has happened, there are certain things that have happened here that have never happened before. For instance, the debt exchange. You, you understand? Um, that hits the pensioners and all that. It had never been seen in the history of this country. These are the stark realities. It does not mean that as MPP, we can't go to the people and earn their trust and prevail on them that they can give us another four years. So for me, it's, it's the decision of the electorate. The electorate gave us a signal in 2020, mm -hmm. which was a tough one. I was expecting the president to take something out of that and make some major changes. He hasn't done so. Right. Um, recently, I saw the general secretary publicly uh, goading the mm -hmm. president to make some changes to his government. I mean, it's, why do you think he's not making changes? I don't know. It's, it's one area I have disagreed publicly with him, with respect, with respect, because I think change is good sometimes, especially even in, in a football game. You can make changes to your strategy, shift players around. You don't need to sack people, but when you keep ministers in one location for seven years, I've said that it's a novelty. I've, I've followed presidential politics around the world, and you hardly see governments mm -hmm. keep ministers that long. So that's an area that I don't think I would say I would give the president a plus on that. But he, he is the president. He, he, he has preview of everything, all the data, and you know, I don't have that. Really? You understand. I mean, if, if the people are performing, we would feel it as citizens. Of course. I think that the country would, would, would do with some changes. Indeed. Yeah. I, I do want us to look at a few things, uh, one of them being your style of communication, uh, the message you take out there, admitting that things have not gone so well uh, you know, in the course of this administration, but there is room to improve. It's quite different from the kind of communication that seems to appraise uh, everything positively for, 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 for you know, the, the current administration. I, me, wonder, I mean, it makes people want to... Tell me, uh, something worries me about this country. You know, I think we like good news too much of it. Mm -hmm. And we aggregate around people with power, sing their praises, and hero worship them. I have said time and again, sycophancy has become a bit of an enterprise. So gradually, we're getting to the point where we are creating cult figures. It is not good for our democracy. It is not good for our party or any party. So I'm very much against that kind of attitude. I think political parties need strong people mm -hmm. within the, the different parties to look the leaders of those parties in the eye and Spread dissent. Sometimes dissent is useful. Does it not make you look like an outsider? No, I don't think so. Trying to play from the inside. No, I don't think so. I think it's important if you are well intentioned and you come out like I did two years ago when the economy was beginning to tank a bit and I was expecting to see some very swift, decisive action to stem the decline. You know, there were some in the party and there are still some now who even attacked me that after expressing those opinions that I would support our candidate. I'm a party patriot. The party went into a contest that I participated. I felt I could do the job. Mm -hmm. If the party had given me that opportunity, I think I would do a fantastic job as president of the country. But the party knew better. Okay, the de I respect the delegates. And we all believe in majority rule. And the delegates voted first round nearly 70% for Dr. Baumio. Mm -hmm. There were 10 of us. And when 70% of the top right. brass decides to go for one person, you know which direction the party is going. So I wasn't surprised that in the second round, he still won with 61%. Sh should the party be taking a second look at its way of communicating? I think so. It's, it's, I think that everyone 
should look at themselves as human beings. And sometimes you are more convincing when you are able to acknowledge that there have been shortcomings here and there, but we have the confidence, we have the drive that we are going to carry you to the destination that we all desire, mm. okay? I don't like this hero worshiping that has become a feature of Ghanaian politics. It's not only with the MPPs, but mm -hmm. the NDC as well. We should stop it. Presidents and leaders of our country need people, courageous people, who can sit across the table respectfully and disagree with them. Mm -hmm. For instance, I mean, something has just happened recently. I've just been reading the last two days, which I find I totally disagree with. I mean, that we can, a country like Ghana, going through difficult economic times in an election year, and the roads minister can decide to invest close to $400 million in a 20-kilometer corridor. Mm -hmm. I think that is not equitable at all. It, it doesn't apply to any strategy if you want to win re-election. Because you have an airport in Kumasi that needs maybe $10 million to complete. Mm -hmm. You have an interchange in Takrade where we win our seats all the time. That needs another maybe $10 million to complete. You haven't done that. You have roads in Impoho. Where so, we, so where the we issue win. of priorities over That's here. right. So I disagree with that. I, I cannot understand how he has come to that realization or that determination and why the technical people, even in the Ministry of Roads and Highways, who are my colleagues, I'm a civil engineer, would advise him to do so. And politically, wh whether he went to cabinet and they approved that. I mean, uh, it's something why, why that is I, the CEO uh, not ca calling it into question? That's the whole point. I mean, I, 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 for the life of me, I, I, I saw it today. He was going around. And I don't quite agree that in an election year, a country that is right. suffering will invest close to $400 million in a 20-kilometer corridor of road. I don't think it's the Come best now, use of our money. There's much more to talk about. When yeah. we come back, I want us to discuss how some people, particularly experienced members like yourself yeah. in the party, think that the NPP of old is not what we see today. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hot Issues. Komna, it would seem that, you know, f based on what you have said, and as many have said here on this program, that the NPP of old is not the NPP we see today. Wh where do you think that problem started from? I think what is important is that when you are a senior member of the party like I am, mm -hmm. you should be able to call a spade a spade. I don't believe in hiding behind the scenes and not confronting issues as they are. Okay? Um... Yes, I've heard people say that kind of thing. I don't agree with them. I, I don't think there has been a direct attempt to muscle people. But you know, we Ghanaians sometimes, um, we tend to take things around the street and the narrow, and we don't want to confront issues frontally. That is what is worrying me as a senior person in the party. If there are things happening that we are not happy with, mm -hmm. I think, we shouldn't allow a culture of fear to be imposed on the party. It's something that I've spoken against. We should get, this is a political party that prides itself on being the one that was a driver for multi-party politics in our country. Mm -hmm. We are the ones that remove the criminal libel law. So we are the ones that love debate. This is a party of debate. And as a young man, I, I attended several meetings of the national executive representing then the young executive forum and I saw some of our top leaders, B.J. Darocha, Laji Bin Saleh, Peter Lajete, Odoi Sykes, in tough arguments, disagreeing respectfully. You understand? We cannot create a situation in this country where political parties, yes, we should respect our leaders who we elect, but there should be debate. Mm -hmm. And we should have leaders who should stand up and correct things when they are going wrong. Because we'll be tired of political leader when you are surrounded by yes men. And that is something that we should all work against. Cool. So I want to see a vibrant NPP, a vibrant, in fact, it is, for, it is not for nothing that presidents in this fourth republic have accepted the participation of party chairmen and party general secretaries in cabinet. It's not in the constitution. Mm. It's not by any fiat, but it's a good convention because they recognize that Presidents are products of their political parties. They are not independent candidates. And the chairman or the general secretary who is in touch with the 275 constituents all the time 
has sometimes a better sense of what is happening around the country, can feel the pulse of the country, and can communicate same mm. in cabinet. Yes. So that when decisions are being taken, the president does not seem too detached from reality. That is the duty of political parties, to communicate the sufferings of the Ghanaian people. But in this case, I don't think you know, there is that attachment between party and the administration. Yes, going around during my uh, campaign, I mean, there's one of the complaints that um, the party grassroots have been talking about. They mm -hmm. feel a sense of detachment, which we have to work to close that gap. It's important. But I think the whole thing surrounds the feature of whether we are calling them delegates or executives. Mm -hmm. People should stop seeing themselves as delegates. Being a delegate which gives you the opportunity to vote during elections is just one out of the many tasks that is given to executives of our party. And especially at the local level at the polling stations, you are supposed to be the driver and the, the frontline soldier of our political advocacy. So you need people who are dedicated. And I've talked about my triple X, which anchors my political uh, life. Mm -hmm. service, sacrifice, and selflessness. So these are traits that we should find in the executives of our party. You see that because you, I think it's waned significantly. Let's be honest. You know, because it is by your own choice that you decide to apply yourself for that job. And so once you are elected as an executive of the party, it demands a lot of sacrifice. Mm. It demands that you are going to be selfless, that you are prepared to risk your life for the common good. I think the spirit of individualism which has gripped Ghanaians is not only politicians. People mm -hmm. talk as if it's only politicians. But, 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 what, what, I mean, why do you think that uh, these triple S's have mm -hmm. waned you know, over time? It's difficult for me to tell, but I think they've seen a few bad examples. Maybe people uh, want to make money, money more than sacrifice. Uh, now, because I they've, they've seen a few bad examples. Young mm -hmm. people who have really not done serious work before thrust into political positions, and then within a short time, they are showing off quite uh -huh. a lot of real estate and slash weddings and what have you. you know, so, but I think that is a wrong example. And that must be in the minority. Mm. And that should not be a signal for the youth to go into politics. Okay. Should go into politics with a drive for the common good, for the collective security of our country. And that's what I'm passionate about. And if I can spend the rest of my life advocating for that, fighting for that in this country. I'm prepared to do it. It's not about positions, you understand. We should have people who are selfless, who are prepared to apply themselves to the job of supporting this society and making sure the right things are done. That yeah. is what I'm interested in doing. So those who look at me and say, oh, now you're very critical of the government, so why are you then now? I am a patriot of my party. Once the party has settled on Dr. Baumia, it is incumbent of me if I'm a real patriot of the MPP, to give my everything to the candidate that has been selected by our grassroots. I see. Selected by the grassroots. How so, do you think the party views you? You say you view yourself as a patriot, but yeah. how do you think the party views you? A great you? many of them. They are very thrilled to see me openly traveling around the country with our candidate, the flag bearer, because they knew I was one of the 10 uh, contestants. Mm -hmm. It was a very tough competition. Um, some very tough statements were made which were true, you understand. So it's important that we build this culture in this country. Now, the fact that I disagreed or corrected a few things during the campaign, that should stop me from collaborating with the eventual winner. You shouldn't do that. It's better than abandoning the party like others have done. I'm not prepared to abandon the party. Come on, somebody will continue to ask, what is your locus in this party? Especially, My locus? Especially, <laughs> hold on, especially, especially, you know, given your recent history, yes. prior to you resurfacing and, and, and running for, uh, you know, for the those who don't, For race. those who don't know, and for the younger ones, in 1992, I was one of the few people who worked with the leaders from our party headquarters, to the Electoral Commission to receive the interim certificate. In fact, the original certificate, the copies of it, I'm one of the few who still have it, given to me by the late B.J. De Rocha. He trusted that as this young man had shown such dedication to this political tradition. In 1992, I was barely 30 years. We were under military dictatorship, Rawlins. The military leader was also a participant in the elections. But I had the courage 
to sit on national television in those days. There was no TV3. There was only GTV. So when you are on it, all the country is focusing on you. Doing party political broadcast at the same time being a public service worker, a young engineer at Ghana Highway Authority. Mm -hmm. If you are not prepared to sacrifice, if you are not prepared to serve, if you are not prepared to risk even your professional development, mm -hmm. you won't do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm someone who's given my, all my youth at the time, you know, and went through and rose to become press secretary to President Kufo for close to six years. So I've worked with Professor Duboini, with Mr. Kufo, mm -hmm. and in fact, in 1998, current president of Kufo, I was one of the leading lights of his campaign. When we were launching his campaign in Osu, the Presbyterian Church, at Beniza Hall, I was the one who lifted his hand and declared him to be the next president of the Republic of Ghana. So talking about stake, so, so, so I've had a stake, mm -hmm. became general secretary in Tamale when I won massively. Mm -hmm. But of course, within two years, I had been orchestrated out of my position. So what Under is, what, a sleuth of concocted allegations which have never been proven to date. But for me, I do things, I just put them behind me. God has blessed me with emotional what, strength and what stability. Is, so so, so yeah. then for some people, yeah. they would ask, what is your place in the party today? Do you feel that... My let's start, let's start, off, my, my let's start off with that. What's your place in the party As a former general today? secretary, mm -hmm. I am a member of the National Council. I'm a member of the National Executive. So Does the party for see that? Of course. Does the, party, I, I, does the party view you as, a, when you as, say the as party, an who, insider? Who are you referring to? Uh, let's talk about the current crop the party, of leadership. No, no, no. The party is all of us. There are millions of us. And all of us have equal stake. I don't buy this idea of that's the party. Who is the party? The party is everyone. Mm. All the grassroots is the collective summation of them that makes the MPP. And we are called New Patriotic Party. Mm -hmm. The patriotic in there is not for nothing. We've got to be able to put a hand on our chest and say we are nationalists, we're going to work for the development of our country, for the development of our people, not for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I, I, again, let's clarify that, that point. If, you, if they were calling people right now for the NPP, would they call you? I don't, I don't understand. I'm, get the questions right. I mean, if, 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 when you say if, they are called... If, 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 they are, if the NPP, if, as look, we know I, them I, now, the executives, the, you look, know... What the, is important is right if, now... Would, would, they, would they mention Kwab Nejapon? Well, we've gone through... At least I was one of the 10 aspirants who had to pay 350000 to file. So I've made a, a contribution to the party. Mm -hmm. And again, don't forget, even when I was on suspension in 2016, freshly on suspension, I supported over 100 constituencies with financial resources. And there are members of parliament today, ministers of state today, I supported to win their seats. 2020, I'm sure you were around the country when... President Akufo invited me, called me personally, and said he wants to see me at the front of his campaign. I went with him around 275. If I was not someone whose political capital is worthy of being called, I don't think the sitting president will call on me to do so. And if I was someone that he didn't trust, could support his cause and do it well, I don't think he would do so. So for me, that is what is important as a servant of the party. You don't have, look, President Kufo, it is who said, it's better to be a messenger mm -hmm. of a ruling government than to be a general secretary in opposition. I see myself as a party servant. I thank God for what has become of my life. Mm. I've been press secretary to the president for close to see, that's the rank of a minister. Given an order of Volta, officer category, in 2008 by President Kufo in recognition of my dedicated service from 1991 when things were tough, I see. when it was difficult to, com, com, to be identified so as MPP. I'm going to come back to yeah. this, and then you know where I was going with that. That's right. But let's talk about something that you said. You said even within political parties, That's right. polarization is now at an all-time high, That's stridently. Right. Stridently, yes. Divisive. That's right. That was you during your, when you launched your when campaign. When I launched my campaign. Absolutely. Yes. How polarized is the NPP right now? I think, look, when you are getting into any main election, and this is not the first time, you know, in 1992, there were multiple candidates, in 96, 98. In fact, in 2007, I was one of the 17 famous aspirants, and I was the youngest at the time. I think this election this year was a bit more, I would say, because of the social media revolution and all the new things that have happened in the world, technological advancements. So it is a bit more tough. 
you know, and uh, people have their freedom to say certain things that they should not be saying. Mm. I mean, you go to certain platforms, downright insults, mm -hmm. even up to today, you know, which I think should not be countenance in our politics at all. Right. It's against the Ghanaian culture. Um, but what I have been praying for and what I've been working for is that the elections mm -hmm. is a process to elect a leader. Definitely, people will fall by the wayside. I did not even make the cut to the last four. You understand? But I still see myself as someone who can make a strong contribution to this party. Yes, you. Okay? That, that, at the end, that at needs the end, to be studied. Well, well, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. Dr. Bohemia won. All the other aspirants were at the Accra Sports Stadium. They were covered by TV3. Made statements to suggest Absolutely. that they were happy with how the elections was run. Well, th that's and that it was that. transparent. No, I, I want to answer that question. Right. So I expect all of them, all of us, everybody had some support, however small you call it. I expect as leaders in the party to get our supporters to respect the decision of the majority. So we should not have strident divisions now. We shouldn't. And again, if you look at the persona of Dr. Baumia, he's someone who is a very nice person. You know, calm, unassuming, very humble, very mm. respectful. I mean, he's done the right thing going to visit all the aspirants in their homes right. as sitting vice president. He didn't ask that they should come to him. Mm. He went to their homes, you know. So he's I mean, trying to build, he's trying to build collaboration. Yeah. I think that if we have a cohesive party together in 2024, despite all the difficulties, economic difficulties we are facing, we have the numbers to defeat the NDC. That, so what is important what is that strident division, uh -huh. the insults and the attacks, and you are this man's man, we can't work with you, that kind of attitude should disappear. All of us should work together mm -hmm. to bring us on board this train that is, we have created. Kumla, is, that, is that possible? It's very possible. Is, is it possible that you'd say that, oh, those factions that exist, you're from the I don't, so I don't so even calm, call them, I don't, so I don't so even calm. call them factions. Look, mm -hmm. in 1992, after the elections. If there are no factions, what are they? No, no, no. In 1992, after the elections in Legon, it was Dr. Safwadu who took us to Professor Dubohini to congratulate him. We, the young executive, most of us were supporting Dr. Kwame Safwadu. You know, that shows you the mark of uh, a Democrat. In 1998, it was a very hectic election. That was the first election. I would say that was when the media, Metro TV and everything had come on board, more media stations. It was very hectic. And although I didn't support then-candidate Kofor, he recognized my skills, the skill set that I bring to the table. So he got the campaign manager, Jacob Echimelamti, to invite me on board. And I was the de facto director of communications leading up to the 2000 election. In fact, I was the one who called him from the mm -hmm. strong room of the Electoral Commission to inform him, Mr. Kofo, you are now elected as the president of the Republic of Ghana. I did not support him. Right. He didn't take it out on me. And he made me his press secretary for close to six years. That is the kind of value that we want us to see as politicians, as party people. So if someone that I did not support, mm -hmm. okay, and I was a contestant in this. But Dr. Baumia has been working with, mm. I mean, I have been working closely with him since he won the election. And others, in fact, when we were in Kumasi, Dr. Apraku was mm. there. Very well. Adainimo was there. Kujupuku was there. All the others have uh, given indication that they will, they will support him. So well, I think the, it's important. The, the, that was then. I mean, you've given us a lot of historical uh, examples. I'm talking about now. This it, is this is when Dr. Baumia was in Kumasi. No, no, but you've also given us historical That's examples right. of how you, uh, you know, leadership have been able to rally the people That's right. uh, behind. Yeah. Uh, we'll live to see whether or not, you know, same happens in this. I want you to be more scene. optimistic. The way you're <laughs> we'll, talking, we'll it, live to see you if it like happens again. You don't but believe it to happen because 18, 18 of your MPs will say they are retiring from Parliament. What is wrong, and, what is wrong and, with that? Uh, what, what, let, me, let me end the question okay. and then we can go into that. Okay. And some have made the argument it's because of the internal situation of the party. What internal situation? Are there not internal wranglings within the no, party? I, right now? Is, it, is there not? You can tell me if you think they are. What is important is there has been an election. In fact, if you looked at the December 4th election where we had selection of the parliamentary candidates for the uh, orphan constituencies, 
No hitch. There was no complaint. Everybody was fine. I have been advising the national executive um, to, as much as possible, have a very sanitized electoral environment. So why do you think there was an en masse retirement? It is not en masse. I mean, if what? People, 18 you know, people? No, no, no. Many times. If, one if, you, if you go back, there have been times that more people have left parliament. But that's their personal decision. And maybe he's assessed the situation on the ground and it's not looking too favorable. He wants to go out as former MP not to be defeated at his primary. That is a personal... Or maybe it could be because they're unhappy with how things are running in the party. Then the they should moment. come out and say it. I think it's important that we don't just merely speculate. It's important that they should be brave enough, like I'm doing now, and say it. What, do, what is happening? What are they not happy with? Mm -hmm. I think it's important. Otherwise, I you mean, know, like we, you, they mm -hmm. have mentioned that the party of old is not what they see right now and are not happy about it. They haven't said that is the reason they have retired, but it's easy to connect the dots. No, the party of old, because now we have all together monetized politics, not only in, uh, in the MPP. And that is a very sad story. I went around the country myself, okay? And uh, of course, all I did was to pay to support their transport. I think that if you go to a place like uh, um, Ho, and people have come from Aflao, and others have come from Sugakope, it's some, quite some distance. They may have come with their own cars, bought some fuel. I can't pay all the 500 they have spent, but 300 or 400 sometimes, yeah, if I have enough money, I pay it out as transport, as support for their transport. We have to recognize some of them may be farmers. And that particular day that you have asked them to come and listen to you, there's a loss of productivity to them. They didn't go to the farm. You understand? So it's, these are things that have happened right from 1992. But that is different from the f kinds of figures I had bandied about. You know? Kumla, so the, that is the, something that the, worries me. The and the we all have to work. Of these MPs. I, I, I also, don't make it a well, point. Well, from the 2024 election. They have chosen to bow out of the 2024 yes, election. Yes, they have chosen not to stand. Right. So I don't think it's their retirement. They've chosen not to stand for elections again. And I think we should, we are the same people who call people is it, is it uh, the, other MPs Mugabe's of the parliament. <laughs> and now when somebody decides that after three, four terms, I haven't looked at the list, mm. frankly, because I don't think it's such a, it's such a big issue. We, you don't? I if don't you're losing so. the likes of Asai Chairman Sabonsu, Jose Wusu, uh, Damboche, Atachian, Samuel Atachian, it's not a big deal? I don't think so. Nobody, you don't think it would have an impact no, no, on, the, on the future of the NPP in Parliament? No, not at all. It shouldn't. It shouldn't at all. Otherwise, when we do so, then it, we are it, building. It shouldn't. We, but, are, we are building but calls. Would it? We are, no, we are building cult personalities. I think they've I mean, all, as the party they've all now, played significant it? roles in the past. They've all played significant roles in the past. Most of them have been ministers of state, and they are advancing in age. Mm -hmm. And some may have other challenges that they are not talking about. You understand? I see. Yes. Yeah, so, um, but it, it surely would have an impact on the NPP. Uh, the, I think they have a, a young... The clout you they, bring to parliament. Of course. They have a, a group of young people who are still in there, um, who, are, who are also steep deep in parliamentary practice. So I don't think we should suffer that much. Do you think you would, the NPP could still have the numbers it has, it has in parliament now? I, if the elections were held now? The elections will not be held now. So I, mean, even if in, I mean, in 2024, <laughs> in, these in, people... In, in December... No, hang on, come down. Yes, yes. In, in 2024, December, yes. these people will not be on the ballot paper. Look, people... Do you think that the, the party could suffer some losses as a result of that? I don't think so. Based on a lot of research that has been made in the past and even currently, I vote for my colors. When I go to I the see. polling station, I don't look at the face. I just look at the... In fact, the Not ballot the papers... No, no, no. The, the, the ballot paper sometimes is so small. These, the old people in the village, they can't even see their, their faces and identify it. Sometimes the printing is not even clear. You look at your flag. So people vote primarily for their party. You know, it's only exceptional cases where there have been independents and it's a very localized problem mm -hmm. that... You have people really going through and deciding that they'll vote for Mr. A or Mr. B. If you look at the percentage of voters who do that, it's almost insignificant. So 
I am. The, I people mean, there, there are those who, vote. who think that the choices yeah. available now, those being vetted to replace some of these um, experienced hands that are leaving in, in the 2024 elections or after the 2024 elections, do not compare with what you're losing. That may be the case because of the experience that those who are leaving have or the name they've created for themselves. But they also came in as first timers. You understand? Some of them also came in as first timers. And in fact, some of them came in as independents, like Joe Seusu. You understand? But he has been able to dis distinguish himself. And so now you see him. So how but would, after 30 how years, would after you 30 know years of how, the parliament, how these the guys, dynamics was, will look different now? It should. Uh, that is. The, the, so you, you should, you should, should. the NPP should. would suffer some kind no, of a loss. Why are you talking about um, suffering? In, in parliament. <laughs> Look, there have been more changes as as in the. There have concerned. been more changes in the NDC. Wait. Look, look at their parliamentary lineup. Check with them. There, there, are more places, more constituencies where they are fighting over the selection when some people have been forced to stand down and all that. You are not talking about that. Only the MPP. But anyway. Oh, I'm you can't speak for the NDC. <laughs> I, I'm not. No, I'm not supposed to speak for you. Yes. Are, you are that, the one. And that's why, you are and that's the one why we in are the talking middle. about the you MPP. Are, you are the one in the middle. So what is important is that we should, no single individual is bigger than the party. And I think that goes for all political parties. The moment we think that individuals are bigger than political parties, we've lost the plot. And so we should encourage new people to get in there. Mm -hmm. They will come and cut their teeth, give them another term or two, they will become experienced, and if they conduct themselves well, they would reach the levels that those you are talking about have reached. I see. Should this inform a strategy uh, direction change or even tweaking the strategy direction of the NPP after, you know, post this announcement? What I want to say is that I believe that the delegate system has been abused. It's been abused. We started from just 10 from each constituency. They were the elected executives and we felt that because there were so few, you know, you was liable to manipulation uh, financial manipulation. So we went to um, Trade Fair, I think 2009, and changed the constitution and said now, five polling station executives. That brings you about 200,000 people. And even still, people are complaining that there's manipulation, okay? I have always, from time immemorial, argued for all card-bearing members of good standing. One, it strengthens the party at the local level. If you're a card-bearing member of good standing in your constituency, it presupposes that you've paid your dues for the previous two years to your constituency. That's why I disagree with the National Party on the particular thing about the, the treasurer's thing about star 77, whatever it is, that everybody should pay their money into a central pool. I disagree with that because I think that political parties should be locally based. Mm -hmm. And all politics happens locally. And we have to strengthen our parties in the constituencies, not at the head office. So the money should go to the constituencies first. And maybe they can be directed to say, send 20% to the region and 20% to the national. But it should not be the reverse. Mm -hmm. I mean, we met at this. We pay our, our dues or whatever we do at our society before right. it goes to the diocese and then head office. You understand? So, I think that once we are able to change that, and I'll be fighting for this, I'll be advocating for one man, one vote in the future. Mm -hmm. And if you have six million people voting, I don't think anybody will attempt to influence them with money because you won't have the, the wherewithal to be able to do so. One, it also strengthens the party at the local level. Everybody is interested in exercising his franchise. Right. And therefore, they will live up to their responsibility of paying their dues at the local level. And then the local party will be able to raise money. So that when presidential aspirants or parliamentary aspirants want to go and meet them, mm. they will have the financial wherewithal to organize a meeting, pay for their own venue, and invite you. Rather than the, the reverse, which is the case now, where we have to go in there, pay for the venue, pay for their transport, and it lends itself to those who have deep pockets. You know, and it's not something that I think is the best for the growth of our democracy. So that's the kind of change I want to see going forward. Indeed. When we come back, we'll talk a bit more about the uh, internal situation of the NPP, <laughs> and then we'll also look at the uh, presidential ticket.
coming into the 2024 elections. Don't go away. Welcome back to Hot Issues. My guest today is Kwabne J. Japon. He is former General Secretary of the NPP. He's an engineer and also politician, obviously. Uh, thank you for sitting with us. Thank you, Kems. I do want to go back to events of 2020 when some of the shock losses came uh, in, in the parliamentary race. One of the things the National Communications team member of the, of the party had said was that the losses of then... And I'm quoting him. He says, we as a party had our own internal issues, yeah. which led to that. Mm -hmm. That is why that crop of national executives was all wiped out. I want us to focus first on those internal issues, which some would say have carried on up until now. I think it's important. But you have been in denial of those internal issues. No, no, I've not been in denial. What I've said is that my advice to this crop of national executives even before the presidential primary, because I've superintended primaries before, in 2014 as general secretary, and superintended the parliamentary elections in 2015 as general secretary. It's not for nothing that we won 169 at the time. If you detach yourself from it and allow the delegates to choose who they want to represent in par them in parliament, you are more likely to get a cohesive unit in each of the 275 constituencies. I think any time that we've tried to manipulate to say protect this candidate A, do this, disqualify that, mm -hmm. that is when we have lost out. And those are the issues that exist now. Oh, so far I haven't heard that. Oh, you must have heard during the race of the top five how they felt that the, the playing field wasn't level for everybody. They thought I that was, there was I, an no. establishment candidate. Of, of course, that one, that is, that is an establishment candidate or the candidate that is perceived to be having the support of the Jubilee As a result, everybody is whipped in line to support that candidate. Well, I said that nobody's thumb was forced to vote the way you voted. At the end of the day, look, I believe that people had their free will to vote. I did not like it when chief executive officers of state organizations left their jobs and followed one candidate. I didn't like it, and I still don't like it. It's something that we should not do. It goes against the tenets of, of corporate governance. Now, when you become a chief executive of a public institution, you are an article for all of us, even including the NDC. Mm -hmm. you know, so it is not your cup of tea to be doing partisan politics. So I took a few swipes of some of my friends who were CEOs. But, but, but that must know. not be the only internal issue the ND, MPP is grappling with, is it? Look, what is important is right now, I haven't heard that some hands are being twisted. Okay. I haven't heard so far. I mean, the election is on 20... I think the vetting ends today or tomorrow. The, the I, parliamentary election uh, primaries is on the 27th of seven, January. Yeah, the yeah. vetting process is, I think, ongoing yes. as we speak. And I know of some petitions and all that. Some parliamentarians, they just hate competition. Anytime they are being contested, they want to raise as many issues as possible. Meanwhile, you parliamentarian, you defeated somebody to occupy the position that you occupy. It's, it should be... What do you say to critics who's think that the NPP is undoing itself, perhaps even crumbling, and it's crumbling. a denial of that. It, it, no, it's, no. It's, it's looking on. No, no, no. It's, it's not true. I, I think that we are over-exaggerating. But are you undoing we yourself? Are, is no. the NPP undoing itself? Why, why do you think we are undoing ourselves? We are not. We shouldn't be. If, well, you lost if, the, if you lost a key member of, of your party, this, uh, you know, I last year in 2023... Truly unfortunate. And a few people have followed him. It's, it's, it, the question you, is... You have a few bedding, of your, your, your bedding, experience hands also going out. They say they do not want to be part of the 2024 I, elections. I, I think you are do get, not know why. I, I think you are getting it wrong. No, we are putting those issues no, no, no. together. I'm, I'm trying to tell you what it is. Our party has a constitution. All of us, 10 of us, we signed an undertaking that we will accept the result. I signed... Alan Shermartin signed, Dr. Baum, everybody signed. It's in that booklet that we presented when we were filing nominations. I do not want to believe that we don't believe in what we sign. Well, I do, we I, believe, I, I, we I should believe in what we sign. So I think it's important uh -huh. that that burden is not on the NPP. But when you put if all people those decide, issues together... If we, no, no, please. If people decide to, by their actions to forfeit their membership, that is not the NPP driving people out. The MPP has not dismissed anybody. There are always push and pull factors. You are, you are not it's, admitting it's, to the push factors. Which are the push factors? Tell me. The, I was a participant in that mm -hmm. election. So I know what happened. And I complained about what happened. 
things that I had to complain. He did not even complain to start mm. with. Right. I was the one who rose up and said, Dr. Baumia has been vice president for close to seven years. He's been, uh, what do you call it, running mate for two terms, has the experience, the stature, to fight on his own. Let him go around and campaign and win that election if he has to win it. Right. Rather than people following him and creating the impression that he's been foisted on the party. So if we put, I was if we the only candidate together. who said that. If we so put I'm all surprised that, that those who did not even raise a finger are now after the event making that an issue for resignation. That, that is not right. right. People should respect their own signatures. You should have values. You should have principles. It's important. And I think rather you should hold those mm. who have not respected their own principles to so, account so, for so that. Hunger. Rather I, I, than I, take on the party. The party hasn't done anything wrong. In fact, what the general secretary did... Kwabna, you said what, you, you, don't, you don't like cult behavior. So yes. let, let's, let's break, let's, let's hold on and, yeah, and, yeah. and look at the issue as yeah. I'm putting it. Yeah. I'm saying if you put all these events that have taken place yeah. over the last uh, several months, months together, yeah. Yeah. right? What does it look like? Does it not look like an undoing of the party? Because there are even those who have said they are resigned in their hearts because of happenings within the party. Look, in party politics. And it has nothing to do look, with the elections. In party politics, we all go into battles. I think all of us should be emotionally prepared for either outcome. In an election, you're either going to win or you're going to lose. It cannot be the case that when you lose, then you have to throw tantrums. Unless there are really cogent factors that you can lay on the table, which I haven't seen because I was a competitor. I'm not talking like somebody who was not there. If I had seen anything wrong, I would have said it. I had agents in all the 16 areas, and there, apart from one flashpoint in Northeast, there was no other report. So, so for me, I'm not saying that so the, the party... So the MPP is not undoing itself? Look, we can improve. We can be better. Our language, the way we, we, we respond to one another, the way we love one another. I even cautioned Dr. Baumia and his supporters after his victory not to over-celebrate. Right. Because when there's, after the battle, people get bruised. And we need everybody back on board. So we don't have to rub it in. Very well. You, I want to talk about understand. the, the uh, yeah. Baumia uh, flag. It's not a ticket yet because he, he, he needs to announce his running mate. Yes. Are you, uh, you know, do you want to be running mate? What is important is that is the prerogative of the flag bearer. Oh, but well, it's, it also, it's also your prerogative a, to say I want to, but I mean, if, he if takes you, the final decision. If, that's right. So let's allow is it him. your desire? Let's, let's leave him the latitude. I don't see there's a grand circus ongoing, as if people are campaigning and getting people in the media to do stories. It's unnecessary. I have said that all the times that flag, um, running mates have been elected is the most unlikely ones who have been chosen. We saw it with Roland Alassane in 1992. And, and you know, in this case, you could be the unlikely one as well. I don't want to discuss that. I think what is important. And we have seen you a lot with the uh, vice president. That does not and suggest... you have also told us you're moving around with him. That does not suggest anything. I'm doing my work as a party servant. It could be that you're lobbying for running mate. He's alive. We've never discussed it. Never. He's alive. I'm sure he'll be watching this program. I see. We've never discussed it. You know, we discuss strategy. How do we get the country back on side? How do we end their respect and love? How do we reposition our things? How do we reorient things? How do we, you know, energize the base of our party? Because I know that if the base of the party is happy, energized, and cohesive, in spite of all the problems, the chances are that we beat NDC. You understand? So those are the things that are agitating my thinking. I see. Not becoming flag bearer. I'm someone who is not... Well, running mates, not flag I'm not in... Look, I'm not one who is given, worried about positions. Look, in 2020... I went with the president around the whole country. Everybody thought I was going to be minister, this minister, that there were so many. I didn't really worry about that. I didn't really care about that. Did you, you, did you, did you if, have if to I'm given explain an opportunity, some of the things that you said? That what? Um, you know, when you launched, launched your, your campaign, campaign, did you have to talk I, about those things with the vice president? No. He, he heard me, mm -hmm. and I was telling the truth. And uh, he did knows he in politics, punches have to be thrown. He threw a few punches. I threw a few. It doesn't mean we should not work together. And everything I said was 
in response to say maybe the media asking me a question. And then those, I'll, those I'll fire Those punches have never come up for discussion. No, no. Because it, there, were, there were no, you see, there were no mal intentions. You know, if I'm, I correct a historical wrong or an impression being created, mm. I mean, the fact of the matter is I'm just stating the facts. And he, he knows that I was stating the The NPP's facts. flag bearer got an extension to announce who uh, his running mates would be. That's right. Um, we're now looking at up to the end of the first quarter of this year. Is that not a little too late in the race? I, th I think that um, right now the party is focused on the parliamentary elections. So we want to do our best to have a very cool, calm parliamentary election. So when the selection process is over on the 27th, and I hope there are no after effects, you know, so that like what we saw during the, the ones for the orphan constituencies, mm -hmm. I'm sure that within a week or two, maybe. An I'm, announcement will be made. I'm sure, I'm sure. Because, look, he, he <laughs> needs to be on the ground running. Mm. It's a, going to be a tough election. I Anybody see. who says it's not going to be tough, doesn't know what the ground is. It's, it's going to be tough. He needs to reach out um, to our party people first and then reach out to the country. And I think he's got the disposition. Kobna, can the MPP break the eight? I've never used the word break the eight. I don't like slogans. I don't like sloganeering. I believe in hard work. Um, it's, it's, it's been an elusive, third successive victory that any party has been able to achieve. But I think with hard work, and this is a very, I would say, a historic candidate because we've never had a candidate from the North before mm -hmm. as flag bearer. And the NDC had always been using that as a tag. Do you think as that? A, do, as a do, tag. You see, do you see the and hard work? We, it's time to start now. That's why I say I want to see that after the parliamentary primaries, and I think he's preparing that. Mm -hmm. He's in the throes of preparing that. He gets his team together, and all of us, patriots, real patriots of the party, then have to put aside all differences, whether you supported Mr. A or Mr. B, right. you know, and support the candidate. That's the choice of the party. And that, that for me, is what I'm interested in. I'm a patriot of this party. I can put my hand on Indeed. my chest. And, and you, have also, you have also shown your loyalty in our conversation to uh, Dr. Mohamed Baumia. You've said that... You know, he deserves to go for... I think he to, deserves to be president. our... No, hang on, hang on. He deserves hang on. our... He deserves the, 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 hang on, hang on. The question is coming, hang on. So, um, what we have heard in a recent survey is the fact that uh, the NDC's candidate, John Dramani Mahama, mm -hmm. leads Dr. Baumia mm -hmm. a lot in the elections. Uh, Who conducted the survey? Uh, Global Info Analytics uh, conducted the survey... Um, in, on the November 29th release, uh, mm -hmm. the, the former president is 73%. 73%? 73%. In, in this country. Yeah, that's and a joke. I no, mean, ba look, that's, really? That's a complete joke. Okay. Even Rollins holding our hands behind us, not opening the register in 1992. Well, based on their sample. Which sample? Anyway, I, don't, I, I have never been a believer in, in service. It's become an industry now. So everybody now has become... Uh, a polling consultant, and they are doing also. Have of you polls. seen any the of the most important polls? polls mm. Are the ones that are conducted on election day, and that's why I I was worried that the president didn't take a signal from 2020. 2020, we had moved from 2016, lost several 63 seat majority to parity, lost half of our popular vote from million to 500. That for me was the signal. Mm for there to be significant changes. That didn't happen. And I'm, I feel pained for that. I think he should have done that. He didn't grab that. But of course, he's the president. Now Baumia is the candidate. He's got an opportunity to chart a new course. Mm. I hope he takes it with and both those, hands. And those, those changes you're talking about was to have reshuffled his government. Was that, is that... It's not only that. Okay, Ma what and, else? Man, and many others. Okay. And, and many others. I wanted to see certain things, you know. Like Imposing what? more order in our public finances. I don't want to see the public accounts, uh, the Auditor General, every year say that 17 billion is, has been misappropriated without any action in Ghana. Things happen, nobody gets punished. I want there to be a strong penalty regime so that 
it will be unattractive for people to tinker with the public treasury. And I suspect that Dr. Baumia will be able to do that. I was speaking I to see. him. I said my six-point plan. If it takes even two, I'll be so happy. I see. Uh, despite what you have said about the Global Info Analytics poll, yeah. uh, they seem to have given very great polls, particularly uh, when, the, when the NPP was electing its, its, flag, its flag bearer. I, I want us to focus I, I, I slightly, don't think, just a little bit. I don't bit. think any just candidate a bit. can get 73% <laughs> in an election in it, Ghana. It, it, well, it was based. <laughs> it was based so, on... So, I mean, it's so, so way off. I mean, look at the, the latest one, which is on December 10th. Mm -hmm. They say Dr. Baomia will lose the northern region as well, except for, you know, a few, a few places. But the truth of the matter is no. uh, John Dramani Mahama takes lead 55% as far as the let northern tell, region is concerned. You, let me tell you something. It, it looks like you have a lot of work to go oh, to do course. because maybe the, just... the NPP may be back in the wrong horse. No, that is who we have selected. That well, is you have the... selected, but it could be the wrong person also. Well, that's the choice of the majority. So we should respect the choice of the majority. The delegates have given us a candidate. And it is our duty as party to support the candidate and give of our best. And I'm very confident on his own record, head to head with John. John Mahama has been president before. Yeah. But you see both no, of no, the them. No, the question is. Head to, to, the, head, to no, head. The question head to is, head in the northern Dr. region. Dr. Baumia has not been president before. But he's been vice president no, also. No, it's not the same. I don't, I don't want it us to go into the, that because is, we've done that before. No, no, it is not the same. And John Mahama should know that better than most because he has occupied the two positions. He knows the sea of difference between being president and vice president. The back does not stop with him. But so the, let's cut the, him the, some the slack. Perception so of the the important. perception of the public is different. Well, we haven't even started the campaign. So why are you in a rush? We haven't started a campaign. We, we, didn't, no have campaign, to, we didn't have to no, start the campaign, no campaign to start to no, no. gauge public perception of the two candidates. Well, the poll right now says that even in the northern region, mm -hmm. where both of the candidates come from, Dr. Baumia is 37%. I've, I've told you I'm, plus, not, I'm uh, not interested in those polls. You can't, you're not? I'm not. I've never been. When I was contesting, I don't look at the. It doesn't team. tell you that the, the vice president anything. might need a lot more work in, in no, the northern region. We already know that. We don't need the polls to tell us that. Right. We already know that. I've been around this country enough to feel the pulse of the country, to know how they feel about the government and our candidate. And that's why I said we need to hit the ground running immediately after the parliamentary primaries. I see. You understand? So it's hard work, hard work, but with everybody on side, all shoulders to the wheel, pushing in one direction, the MPP has more numbers than the NDC. What's, we only what's, lose... What's, what's we Dr. Baumier's message, really, uh, in the 2024 elections? Because, uh, I don't know, 24-hour economy seems to have taken lead of everything else. 24-hour economy? Yes. They haven't, by, even, by they the haven't even talked through it. Because any question they've asked, they don't even understand what the 24-hour economy... Dr. Baumier is playing catch-up right now, is he what, not? He's not playing catch-up. I mean, he's been very clear that he wants to transform this country in a technological advanced way. Use it. People are the same message is preaching not the, same, the last four it's years. It's not the same message. It's not. People have forgotten that today, our national ID card is being integrated with all facets of our life, and that is a big plus for this country. It's a very big plus. Today, you can sit at home and do a lot of your transactions without going to the bank. He has been the one who has been driving this interoperability thing right from long, and he I sees. See this country he will talk i don't want to take the leaf out of his book thank you so much for sitting with us it's a pleasure kopnej japon is former general secretary of the npp we've been discussing issues of the party uh the now the past even and and then the future as far as the 2024 elections is concerned i'm kemeni amano thanks for your company i'll see you same time next week bye-bye